Hello and welcome to Code with Vinay. In today's video, we'll be talking about Hamming numbers. If you follow my channel, you must have noticed that the focus is not just on correct answer, but also on efficiency, elegance, and readability. The same will happen in this walkthrough also. So let us start with the Hamming number problem. Hamming numbers are positive integer numbers whose prime factors include two, three, and five only. Let's break this down with some examples. Take the first example that is n is equal to 6. When we factorize 6, we get 2 times 3. Since these factors are only 2 and 3, which are in our allowed list of prime factors, 6 is a Hamming number. Now let us consider 8. Breaking down 8 gives us 2 times 2 times 2. Again, the only prime factor here is 2 making 8 a Hamming number. What about 90? Factorizing 90, we get 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. All these factors, that is 2, 3 and 5, are in our allowed list, that is 2, 3, 5. And hence, 90 also qualifies as a Hamming number. However, not all numbers meet this criterion. Take for example, 14. Its factors are 2 and 7. Since 7 is not in our list of allowed factors, 14 is not a Hamming number. Similarly, 44. 44 factors into 2 times 2 times 11. The presence of 11, which is outside our set of prime factors, disqualifies 44 as a Hamming number. The objective is to design a program to accept any positive number and check if it is a Hamming number or not and display the result with an appropriate message. Now, if you look carefully, what they are asking us to do is we have to prime factorize the number and we have to prime factorize it completely. We just can't divide by 2, 3, 5 and 7 and say that whether it is a Hamming number or not. So, we have to divide completely that is we'll keep on dividing the number till we get to one and then we'll decide whether it is a Hamming number or not. So without further ado, let's begin with the coding part. Since we have to accept user input, we'll start with import java.util.asterisk. Now we'll have our driver method that is main and for that I'll create a class. We'll say class Hamming number. Within this class, we'll have our main method and then we'll declare a scanner class object. So scanner input is equal to new scanner and we'll say system dot in to accept the input from the keyboard. And when all the thing, all the input is done, we'll close the object to avoid memory leaks. The spelling should be in dot Close. Now, once this is done, let us display a message for the user. That is, we'll display a prompt. We'll say input. And that will be followed by enter any number. So, the user will enter the number. And let's say we want to store that number into the variable n. So, int n is equal to in dot next int. This takes care of the input. And then let us concentrate how to proceed. So we have to prime factorize the number. And if you notice carefully, we are first trying to divide by the smallest prime number that is 2. Once we cannot divide by 2, we start dividing by 3. Once we cannot divide by 3, we start dividing by 5. So we need a way to generate a sequence of prime numbers, that is, we want the first prime number, let's say 2, then we want the next prime number, 3, next prime number, 5, and so on. And in order to write a very readable program, which is easier to understand, I'll separate the prime number generation logic from the actual Hamming number code. So what for that, what we'll do is, I'll create a separate class, I'll call it prime sequence, that is, we are interested in generating a sequence of prime number. And then we'll create a variable for that sequence. We'll say private int, we'll call it number. And then from the constructor, we'll initialize this variable number to the first number that is 1. So we'll say public 
prime sequence and within the prime sequence we'll initialize it to one now please note one is not a prime number but that is okay and then what we'll do we'll create one more method to obtain our next prime number and for that what we'll do is we'll say public int and let's call it next prime that is whenever we call the next prime we should get our next prime number and the logic will be very simple we'll say while not is prime plus plus number we'll keep on doing this till we get the number and then we'll finally say return number we have a while loop and inside this loop we increment number and check if it's a prime number or not using the is prime method which we'll be designing soon but for now is prime is a standard method to check for primality that is whether or not the number is prime now the loop continues until it finds a prime number this is very important the loop continues until it finds a prime number and when a prime number is found the loop breaks and the method returns this new prime number so the first time the method next prime is called the value of the variable number is 1 plus plus number will make it 2 2 is a prime so this loop will finish and the variable will contain the value 2 so 2 will be returned for the first time the next time the method next prime is called the value of the number is 2 plus plus 2 will make it 3 3 is also a prime number so the loop will finish and the value 3 will be returned but next time when we come over here the value will be 3 plus plus 3 will make it 4 4 is not a prime number the loop will run again now 4 will become 5 and then we'll return 5 and this goes on now our next task is to implement the is prime method which checks whether the argument is a prime number or not now i have already done a detailed video on checking a number for primality and you can find the link to that video in the description below so let us define the is prime method so we'll say public static boolean is prime and let's say the argument is n so if n is less than 2 it cannot be prime so we'll check it if n is less than 2 return false now 2 is the only even prime number so if n is equal to 2 we'll say return true if we have reached this else and the number is even it means that it's not a prime number please understand 2 is the only even prime number so if we have reached over here and n modulus 2 is equal to 0 we'll say return false and finally if we have reached this else block it means that now we have to divide and for that we'll say int divisor is equal to 3 we'll start dividing by 3 because we have already checked for 2 and then we'll go till the square root now I don't want to calculate the square root inside the loop because that will lead to calculation of the square root again and again so we'll say int limit is equal to int math dot sqrt n and then over here we'll say while divisor is less than equal to limit and then we'll keep on adding the divisor by the value 2 now the reason I am saying equal to 2 because we are starting from 3 then we'll go to 5 we will not go to 4 because 4 is even and we know that our number is odd if we are inside this else block so let's say divisor plus is equal to 2 and now we are not starting from 1 we are not going till the number if there is any divisor in between it means that the number is not prime so if n modulus divisor is equal to 0 we'll straight away say return false and outside the loop that is over here 
if we reach here it means that the number is prime i'll quickly format the code so that it looks better before proceeding further i would like to check whether or not this portion that is prime sequence is working properly or not and for that what i'll do is i'll comment out this section for the time being and then we'll take a loop before taking the loop we'll create a object we'll say prime sequence prime is equal to new prime sequence and then we'll take a loop of 10 times int i is equal to 1 i is less than equal to 10 i plus plus and then we'll print we'll say system dot out dot print not ln just print and we'll say prime dot next prime so if our logic is working properly we should get the first 10 prime numbers so before i run this just let me add a space between the items and now we'll run the program to see if we if this is giving the first 10 prime numbers or not so 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 23 and 29 and this is correct so let's proceed so first let me remove this testing portion then we'll uncomment our previous code and let's think how to proceed so we have already taken the number on line number 75 that is int n is equal to in dot next int so the next step is to generate the prime sequence so for that we'll say prime sequence prime is equal to new prime sequence and then we need a few variables we need one variable for divisor and the first value will be prime dot next prime which will be two then we'll take a temporary variable because we need to print so we'll say int temp is equal to n and that will be followed by we have to store the result somewhere and for that i'll say string result is equal to initially nothing then we have to store the status also please understand the question says we have to display all the prime factors and then we have to display a message so we have to store somewhere whether or not the number is a hamming number as soon as we get a factor above five we'll say that okay the number is not a hamming number and for that we'll use a boolean variable we'll say boolean status is equal to true initially we'll say true if it is not true we'll make it false now we have to divide and for that we have to take a loop the loop will continue till the number is not equal to one so while temp is not equal to one our loop is going to run and inside this loop we have to keep on dividing by the prime number that is p dot next prime which we have stored in the variable divisor so we'll take one more loop to keep on dividing by the divisor that is while temp modulus divisor is equal to zero till it is dividing we'll keep on dividing it and every time we'll take out the divisor so we'll say temp is equal to temp divided by divisor and then we'll store the result we'll say result plus equal to divisor and if you look carefully again in the question we are displaying an into sign after each but not after the last one so what we'll do over here is we'll check we'll say that if temp is not equal to one that is the number is not completely divided and finished we'll add an asterisk so we'll say result plus is equal to uh, I am saying the adding an asterisk but the question was adding a small x so let us add a small x instead of an asterisk so we'll go over here we'll make it x and now comes the important part whether or not it is a hamming number so while dividing if the divisor is more than 5 we'll say that status is equal to false now this loop is going to divide the number repeatedly by the divisor till it gets divided so we are dividing by two till it's getting divided then we are supposed to proceed to three so we'll go just after this loop and we'll check 
that if after this loop temp is equal to one that means our job is done we'll say break otherwise we'll say that divisor is equal to the next prime number so we'll say prime dot next prime so now all the calculation is done and the only thing left is to print so we'll say system dot out dot println we'll give the caption output output and that will be followed by the variable that is n and then we'll say equal to followed by the actual prime factorization which is stored in the variable result once this is done we'll check the status so if status that means if it is equal to true if it is equal to true we'll say system dot out dot print ln and our message will be n plus is a Hamming number if it is not then I'll simply copy this line we'll add the else clause and we'll say is not a hamming number let me reformat the code so control shift i the code gets reformatted the last step is to run the program and check whether it is working for our given test cases or not so the test case the first test case is 3600 which is a hamming number let's check so we'll run the program and we'll enter 3600 i'm not liking this new line after the prompt that will change so 3600 is giving 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 into 3 into 3 into 5 into 5 which is correct and it is a Hamming number very quickly we'll go to the input part and we'll remove ln from here and then we'll run the program for the next test case that is 5832 which is also a Hamming number so once more and this time I want to enter 5832 5832 it is a Hamming number and this is also correct let us check for the other case which is not a Hamming number 7854 so we'll go over here and we'll say 7854 I press enter this is not a Hamming number and now the in next input is minus 120 and we forgot to check for the negative number check so we'll just copy it over here we'll go down and right when we are having the input that is over here we'll check if n is less than 0 system dot out dot print ln will display our message and the remaining thing will go inside the else block that is the else block will start from there and it will end over here again we'll reformat the code and let's run it just for the sake of completeness we'll run it for minus 120 again so there we are we run the code and we'll say minus 120 and we get our message negative number entered invalid input so this brings us to the end of this video we have seen how to test for a hamming number in an efficient and elegant manner that's all for this video see you in the next video till then happy coding your feedback is valuable to me. I want to make sure that my videos are clear and helpful. You can follow me on the internet on any one or all of these channels.